The Unit 28 assembly drawings. Assembly drawings are industrial drawings, often show two or more parts that must be put together to form an assembly. An assembly drawing shows parts or details on a machine or structure in their relative positions as they appear in completed unit. Uh, in addition to showing how par the parts fit together, the assembly drawing is used to represent the proper working relationship of mating parts and function of each. Um, provide a visual image of how the finished product should look when assembled. Provide overall assembly dimensions and center distances. Provide a bill of materials for machined or purchased parts required in the assembly. Supply illustrations that may be used for catalogs. Sub-assembly drawings. Many large or complex machines are composed of smaller units that will become part of a final assembly of a machine or product. These sub-assemblies are also called, or as they are called, uh, may consist of machine components, purchased parts, or both. Assembly, or additionally, uh, a sub-assembly may be a unit that is built by an outside supplier or provided by a different manufacturing facility within the same company. Sub-assembly drawings generally provide more detail and are usually shown in separate points. Um, bill of materials or parts list. Some information regarding a parts list of barrel materials was previously provided in Unit 2, the title box, uh, but it is worth repeating here. The term bill of materials or parts list are used interchangeably and referred to as a section of the assembly drawings that lists the parts required for a completed assembly. A parts list may appear in a corner of the primary assembly drawing or on a separate sheet. Each item listed in the bill of materials is referred to as a detail. Non-standard parts may be may require a detailed drawing. All right, details uh, may be standard purchase parts such as machine screws, bolts, washers, springs, or non-standard parts that must be manufactured or fabricated. Unaltered purchase parts do not require a detailed drawing. The Specifications for standard units are provided in the parts list or bill of materials. Non-standard parts require drawings that may appear on one sheet or separate sheets. The detailed drawings supply more specific information that is provided on assembly drawing. All views, dimensions, and notes require a, to describe the part completely appear on a detailed drawing. The details of a mechanism are identified <coughs> on an assembly with a reference letters or numbers. These letters or numbers are contained in circles or balloons with leaders running to each of which it refers. Figure 28.4. Um, these symbols are also included in a parts list that gives a descriptive title for each part. So an example here is going to be 1 is a detail number, B is a detail letter, a detail number or letter, and then over 12 which would be the number or the sheet number which the detail can be found. So dimensioning. Assembly drawings should not be overloaded with dimensions that may be confusing to the print reader. Specific dimensional information should be provided on detailed drawings. Only such dimensions as center distances, overall distances, the dimensions, dimensions that show the relationship of details to the assembly as a whole should be included. However, there are times when simple assemblies may be dimensioned so that de no detailed drawings are needed. In such cases, the assembly drawing becomes a working assembly drawing. And then this would be your assignment. Alright, Unit 29, Welding Symbols. Introduction. Welding is a process used for permanently joining parts together. It often takes the place of common fastening details or devices such as nuts, bolts, screws, and rivets. Welding is used extensively in fabrication work. Fabrication is the construction of an assembly by fastening separate units together. This is often done to produce a structure that normally would need to be cast. Fabricating is less expensive means of construction. So welding joints, the relative position of the parts being welded determines the type of welding joint formed. There are five basic welding joints. You got your butt joint, your corner joint, your T joint, your lap joint, and your edge joint. So types of welds. There are a variety of types of welds that may appear on a print. 
the section of a particular weld depends on the joint, material thickness, strength desired, or required penetration. The physical shape of the welding joint gives each weld its name. Figure 29 shows some basic welds used on joint metals. So you got the billet, you got plug or slot, you got square, a V, bevel, a U, a J, a back, and a flare V. So weld and welding symbols. The standard graphical symbols used to convey welding information were developed by the American National Standards Institute the American Weld and the American Welding Society. Um, the symbols are a shorthand method for transmitting information from a drafter or welder to a welder. Uh, the ANSI standard makes a distinction between weld symbols and welding sim or weld symbols and welding symbols. A weld symbol is used to identify the type of weld required. Figure 29.3 shows the basic weld symbols used in industry. Welding symbols may be made up of several elements of information. The information provides specific instructions about type, size, and location of weld. The elements that may appear on the welding symbols are shown in figure 29.4. So here are some examples of that. Here's your weld symbols, different corners, bevels, and stuff, and then location of elements of a welding symbol. So here's all of those. So terminology. A reference line, a heavy solid line that forms the body of the welding symbol. All other information is placed in positions around the reference line. So then you got arrow. The arrow is attached to the end of the reference line and contacts the weld joint. Welded joints are thus referred to as arrow side welds or other side welds. The arrow touches the weld joint on the arrow side as shown in figure 29.7. The other side weld is located on the part surface, opposite of the arrow. Arrow side information is always shown below the reference line. Other side information is always shown above the reference line. So you got basic weld symbols as previously indicated in figure 29.3. These specify the type of weld. Then you got supplementary symbols used to provide additional information as the extent of welding placed of welding and bead contour. Figure 29.5 shows the supplementary symbols of the American Welding Society. So there's the different symbols. And then you got tail. The tail appears on the end of the reference line opposite the arrow. It is used only when a specific welding process is specified. Dimensions. Dimensions of a weld may vary may specify size, length, and spacing of welds. These dimensions appear on the same side of the reference line as the weld symbol. Common practice is to call out a weld size, type, length, and center to center spacing pitch. Then you got finish. Uh, finish requirements may be specified below the arrow side contour symbol or above the other side contour symbol. And then process specifications provide within a tail opening. This information is specified only when necessary. If the welding process is or indicated elsewhere on the drawing or specifications are known, the tail and reference are omitted from the welding symbol. Location of weld symbols. The welding symbol may be placed on any orthographic view. Um, it is generally be shown on the view that best shows the joint. The location of the welding symbol on each view is illustrated in figure 29.7. However, when it is shown on one view, it is not necessary to include it in any other of the views. In this case, note that the front view is the best viewing for adding the symbol. And then here is your next assignment for the welding.